Hey folks, I'm Mike and this is Ink Dependence, and today I have a bunch of pens to show you. They're all the same, uh, but there's a bunch of them. These are the Aurora Ypsilon. And there's uh, five of them here, and these come in a myriad of colors, just uh, tons of colors, also different materials. You can get them all the way up to solid sterling silver, I think, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, these all have gold-plated steel nibs. Uh, they're um, kind of a very medium-sized pen. Let me put some, most of these down. Uh, I'm going to pick my favorite, which is uh, currently this red one, I think. I really like the yellow as well, uh, but I like the nib and the red one better, so I'll use this one. These are uh, sort of a medium-sized pen. I've got a blue nail for uh, the Painted Man campaign. Hey, dudes. Quit hurting kids. That's a good message. Um, anyway, so this is, I just saw it on the film, like, oh, hey, blue fingernail. Um, so this is a fairly medium-sized pen. Uh, here it is next to something else that a lot of people have, which is the Twisby Eco. You can see it's a little bit shorter than the Eco, but very comparably sized. Uh, let's see if I can show you the bottom, too. Yeah, these are all synced up. So uh, very comparably sized to the Eco, which is a pretty medium-sized pen. Where they do differ a little bit is going to be in the size of the grip section. Uh, if I tend to hold my Eco up here, where it's, uh, I don't know, 10.1 millimeters or something. I know that because I have one of these now. It's got a caliper. This is actually a pretty fun caliper. Let's see. Uh, this is uh, yeah, 9.4 there, but I grip up here, which is about 10.5. So uh, it's a little bit wider there in the grip, but uh, otherwise very comparable sort of uh, size. Here they are again. Lined up. There we go. So uh, it's going to be a little bit shorter uncapped, and actually the Epsilon is quite a bit shorter uncapped, I think. And for me, I sort of need to have it... That's weird. Uh, it'll be better when I show you the top-down view, but um, I sort of need to have it capped. And this is a snapped cap pen. Ah, good snap, eh? And snaps, and actually snaps on the back as well. This is a super comfortable pen to post, uh, for me anyway. Makes it long enough to be usable for long periods of time. I've done quite a bit of this. I'm sort of peering around my own hand. Uh, but I think it's a very nice pen to have capped. It doesn't give you a lot of weight at the back, but it does sort of make it sit nicely in your in your uh, the web of your hand here. There we go. Uh, some other pens, I, let's see, do I have any around? Yeah, I don't have any around that I dislike that much, but there are a couple other pens that are really light even when you post them. Uh, for me, the Lamy Safari is too light when you post it even when you post it, and when it's not posted, it's way too light. But this one gives it a nice heft. Um, there is a bit of brass in here. Uh, I actually don't know if there's any in the cap. The cap is definitely heavier on this end than at the bottom. There might be some stuff going in here. It might just be this clip, uh, which is a very nice clip, actually, if you notice there. It's sort of a Y-shaped clip, like an Ypsilon. So there you go, that's the Y for the Ypsilon there. But I think it's a very classy sort of clip. In fact, I think this is a, a very classy looking pen. Uh, thanks to Ryan at Kenro for sending these out for me to review. I've had them for a while just because I wanted to use all of them uh, for quite a bit before I actually reviewed them. And it turns out I really like these pens. I wish I didn't have to send them back, but uh, he tells me he wants them back, so I gotta, I gotta send them. Uh, so anyway, there's that. Uh, the design is fairly simple. You see uh, uh, sort of uh, gold-plated stuff at the top and at the bottom, or at least gold-colored. I actually don't know if it's gold-plated. It doesn't say uh, anywhere that I can find uh, whether it is or not. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably... Probably not. I don't know. You'll have to check the uh, the website for that. I actually don't remember seeing it. I mean, anyway, gold colored uh, here and here at the end, and also black tips to balance this sucker out. Very symmetrical. Uh, you can see here that the uh, cap is actually kind of um, uh, I don't know. It it flares here at the cap area, so it's kind of fatter there than it is anywhere else. It also tapers a bit toward the bottom. So I think it's a very a very pleasing look to me. Uh, I, one of the people that I was, uh, I was having lunch with the other day noticed it and said, you know, I, I don't know, I like it all right, but I don't like the color. I think it was this maroon. They didn't care for this maroon color. Uh, but, you know, whatever, people have different tastes. I, I love this bright red. You can see a definite difference between the two when you put them together. But this is a nice bright red. Uh, along the bands, let's see, you'll see Italy stamped here. Also along the band here, right there, it says Aurora Italy. That's pretty much the only branding on here. Uh, it's very small amount of branding, which I'm in favor of. I think a pen ought to have a uh, recognizable brand to it, but also it shouldn't be just like, you know, brands everywhere. So I'm um, taking this off. Again, very nice affirmative clip. Uh, click, you can see inside there is a plastic slip cap. I've had no problems with these drying out. Uh, I have refilled a couple of them a couple of times because uh, I've written with them quite a bit. Not this one. This is the extra fine. In fact, this might actually be the original fill on the extra fine. Uh, no, it can't be. I think I've written more than that, but... Um, I don't know, maybe. Maybe this is original. It's hard to say. Um, the, uh, 
the mouth here is uh, slightly wide. Oh, that's my phone. And we're back. Sorry, that was my phone ringing, and uh, now I've got a dog fighting a cat back here. It's uh, it's a madhouse here at the Mike residence. Um, so what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was talking about the converter. I open this up. Uh, you can see this is um, uh, got plastic threads going into the resin barrels. That's nice. They're not going to strip out on you or anything. I don't think that's great. Uh, this gold ring is secured. It's not going to come off as it does in a couple of other models of pen that I could name. Um, here's what the end of that converter looks like. And if you'll notice, it is quite large. This is a bigger bore. You can see, can you see inside there? Yeah, probably not. Uh, but this is a bigger bore than your standard international. It won't take regular cartridges. It won't take a regular converter. Uh, these, it would be too small. So uh, this has got a bigger bore than those. So you'll need to have an Aurora converter or Aurora cartridges. Um, or, and of course it comes with the converter and it comes with the cartridge. The cartridges are actually pretty big. Um, one of these pens has one, let me think. I think it's probably this one. I said I'd use the cartridge. So this is the cartridge, and it is, um, is a very long cartridge. So this is at least double size, probably more than that, although it tapers. Um, so there you go, That'll, that's, that's that. Um, but it does have a bigger size, so it is proprietary. Um, although I've heard that you can use uh, Parker as well, also has the same size cartridges and converters. I don't know if that's necessarily still true, but uh, maybe someone will correct me in the comments or something if I'm wrong. Uh, but that is what I've seen on the interweb. So um, that's the converter. It's a pretty standard converter. Aside from the size, you get the you know metal flange up here. It's not doesn't screw in or anything like that. Um, it does go in fairly deeply, uh, and it uh, the action is fine. It's a perfectly fine converter. You know, converter is converter. Um, the uh, oh the inside of this the barrel actually has brass inside has a sleeve in there, so that's what's giving this a lot of weight. Also, it's not at all transparent or translucent. You can maybe see a little bit of, like, it's a little bit lighter up until about here where that, yep, that's right where that brass starts. So I'm thinking that's probably, uh, you know, it's probably on purpose. So you can't really see through this pen, gives it kind of a classy look. Also, if you look at the edge uh, here, it's kind of a nice edge. It's like a little bit rounded or, actually it's beveled, so that's kind of cool. This is a very, the fit and finish on this pen. Scraggles! Shh! My goodness, she has wound up today. The finish and fit and finish on these pens are great. Um, no flaws anywhere that I can see on here. They're just great. Threads are nice and smooth. Uh, they're pretty small, but they're there. Uh, it does take a little bit of twisting to get this on there, and that's fine. Uh, because of that brass, of course, in there, you're not going to want to use this as an eyedropper. Uh, I don't eyedropper pins anyway, so that's not a problem for me. Um, the nib, move on to that, I suppose. You can see there, it's fairly unadorned. Not a whole lot of stuff going on there. It has like a little swirl and like, a little swirl down the other side. And then uh, you can see in the middle it has the um, uh, Aurora name down here, and above that it just has the size of the nib. You probably can't see that here, but if you go to the blog inkdependence.com, uh, you will find uh, you know close-up pictures of that. Uh, the nib itself is kind of angular a little bit. You can see it's fairly angular down there along the uh, off the shoulder. Um, it's a very nice nib. I think it's simple, kind of pretty. You also have this nice uh, sort of ridge right here, which if you hold fairly close to the nib. Uh, it's a nice place to put your fingers. Also, it probably gives you that nice satisfying snap. Uh, it matches this uh, sort of bump on the ring back here. It's not perfectly smooth. There's a bit of a bump. Scraggles. Goodness. Man, she really wants to play with that cat. Um, these, uh, these nibs are known for being a little bit toothy from what I hear. One second, please. Scraggles. Shh. Quiet down. Can't you see this? That's what I'm doing. Do you want to be on video? Scraggles? There she is. That's Scraggles. She's the one making all those noises. Hi. See? I'm on here. I'm recording. Yeah. Shush. All right. Back to the action. Um, these nibs are, uh, yeah, I think they're pretty. Um, anyway, they're also made in the same factory in Italy that all the rest of this is. One of the interesting things about this company is that it's been around for an awfully long time. By American standards, by European standards, probably not that long really, but like 1919 they opened their first factory, and I believe that's the same factory they're using today, and also they make all the stuff here. So nibs, feeds, all of this stuff is all made in that same factory, and man, they do a really solid job. I don't have that many Italian pens, I'm hoping I will get to use a chance, to, or get the chance to use more, as uh, I get, um, you know, hopefully uh, Ryan from Kinro is happy with this one, and they'll send me a few more of these things to check out. But the Italian pens I've used are quite good, but this is a very good pen. I haven't used that many. I've got a couple from, um, uh, who do I have? I've got a couple of Deltas, I guess, but um, 
this is a very, this is uh, the fit and finish on this pen is fantastic. So um, there's that cl that click. You gotta love the click. All right. Uh, let's see anything else I need to tell you here. Oh, in the hand, a uh, very nice 22 grams ish. That's uh, no problem at all. Uh, it's a fine weight, I think. Uh, the body material on these is resin. The nib is steel. It's gold plated. Um, so it's got that gold color. My only quibble with this pen is that it is a little small to use unposted. If you have smaller hands, I'm sure this won't be a problem for you, but I do have big old mitts, uh, and so this is a bit of a problem for me. Um, also, the grip is a little bit smaller. I was doing some measuring with my brand new fancy caliper, and the, uh, the section of these is about a millimeter smaller than I tend to like, it turns out. I was measuring a bunch that I do like, and those are about 10-ish, 10, 10 and a half. Um, and these are about nine, so about nine millimeters around here at the grip section. Scraggles! Gosh. This is what's going on, in case you're curious. There's a cat here, and a dog, and they're playing. That's what all that noise is. That silly dog. Goodness. Uh, so it's a little bit skinny here. But otherwise, uh, that's my only quibble with these, uh, these pens. Um, as far as the nibs go, I did get a couple of uh, suspect nibs when they first got sent out. Um, these are all different sizes. It comes in several different sizes, these nibs. Uh, let's see make them in order. Uh, you have extra fine here, fine in this maroon, which I believe is called Bordeaux, fancy. Uh, this hunter green style one here is a medium, the black is broad and the yellow is italic. Um, of these, my favorite nibs are these two, which are the fine and the extra fine, which is an oddity for me. I usually like medium or maybe fine. Uh, and then the big ones, I'm, I like bigger nibs. But um, I don't love the, the two bigger nibs here. I took these to the Fountain Pen Club meeting uh, the other day, well, the yellow one anyway, and uh, this one has the stub nib. Uh, it's listed as a 1.2, I've seen in a couple of places. Most places just says it's stub. It's not actually a stub, it's an italic, and it's a little, pretty legit italic. It's very, uh, it's quite sharp on the edges. Uh, you can definitely feel that crisp italic feel when you write. Um, I'm not going to be able to, I don't think, get close enough here to show, but no, I'm not going to. Um, but the nib on this one and on the other one is ever so slightly um, like Y-shaped, so it's kind of, come on, I got, need more fingers. It's kind of like this, it's just a little bit. It's just a little bit con, uh, convex. Yeah, a little bit convex. Um, so if you put some pressure on it, it writes just fine, but you have to put a little bit of pressure. Um, and one of my friends at the pin club was saying, you know, this would be a really outstanding nib. If it was just a, like, just a little bit of work, it could be totally outstanding. Um, so if you like italics, this is a very cool italic. Um, if you uh, want to do maybe a little bit of work, the first one I got was very con uh, convex. This one is just a little bit convex. I think it might just be a style of this nib, just the way it is. Um, and it's also a little bit toothy, so it's kind of sharp on the edges. The broads um, also are a little bit toothy, I think. An interesting thing about these is uh, that one so much. Let's see, this one. Is this 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 is the fine. Yes, the fine. If you look at these back to back, and I think you can probably sort of tell. The broad, which is this one, has a much larger tip than the uh, fine. Like the fine and the extra fine actually look like they're almost untipped. They're so little tipping material there, they almost look untipped. And then you get to the broad, it's huge. Um, and also the broad seems to be a little bit, um, I don't know, it's a little bit wonky. The first one I got had clearly been damaged. I think it was... Um, I'm not sure if it was new when I got it. It might have been. It might have come not new, and they just didn't know or something. Or they sent it to reviewers and didn't care. But uh, I told Ryan about it, and he sent me out a new one very quickly. So that was cool. Um, solid CS there. Uh, even though I'm not exactly a customer, even he just sent these out for review. Uh, this one, I don't know, it still looks a little bit strange. I, I can't really tell if there's something wrong with it, or maybe it's just my eyes. But it's like it's a little bit. Um, I don't know, just a little bit off center, maybe or. Maybe it's just a little bit, just a little bit off. I don't know. Anyway, it writes fine, really, but uh, it does look a little weird. It's a little bit toothier than the other ones. The extra fine on this one, though, uh, which is this, this bright red one that I've been showing, I love this extra fine. The extra fine is great, um, which probably means that if you are, and these are all also, by the way, a very Western sort of extra fine. Um, and as I was saying, this is I'm so scattered right now. This is a listed a 1.2 italic. I've seen some places, but I was using a little loop. Uh, at the Fountain Pen Club meeting, it sort of averages out of about 1.3. So it's a fairly wide italic, but it is very sharp. So if you want those like crisp lines, you're going to get them. They're there for sure. All right, so let's uh, switch over to the other camera angle and uh, 
I don't know, do a little bit of that. Okay, so this is a different camera angle here. So let's do a look at a couple of other things. Uh, firstly, the box. This is the packaging that the Epsilon comes in. It's a very nice, classy box. Uh, has some Epsilon information on the end there. Uh, just kind of glossy on the top, slightly less dark on the bottom. You open it up, and it's got a picture of a nib. It's got the Aurora logo, which I think is a, like that's a, a logo that belongs on like a classic car or something. It looks awesome. Uh, inside is this box. You're gonna really immediately smell the leather uh, from this. It's got one of these sides that flip down. I really like that. I've seen that uh, on, I think, only one other box, which is on the Levenger Select, um, the True Rider Select. Uh, and I really like that feature because you don't have to, like, flip the box over to get the other thing out. Uh, this smells, man, it smells good. Yeah, it smells, it smells like leather. So uh, it has a nice Aurora logo stamped into the leather there. You can see it's kind of a, I don't know, an offset sort of design there, which means you're not going to have space underneath. Uh, yeah, it doesn't come out. This is just flat. You get the Aurora uh, informations here. You have a little bit of stuff in the top here. Uh, since 1919, uh, made in Italy. And they are, as far as I know, all made in one place. Uh, comes. This is the uh, extra cartridge that I didn't use. A uh, little band there. You know, the pen will come underneath here, of course. Got a couple of little elastic things, so the presentation is quite nice. And the box is actually pretty sweet. Um, very closes very with much authority. So that's the packaging this guy comes in. Uh, kind of a lot of packaging, but it is classy. So if you're giving this to somebody as a gift, uh, it's a nice, uh, nice box for that. And actually, uh, at the price point these are at now, man, it is a sweet gift pen. Uh, it's not super expensive, but it's um, the kind of pen I think would be really good to just give somebody to get them into fountain pens. Give them something really fine to begin with, and not a you know, Lamy Safari is kind of what everybody begins with, but that's at about a what, $25 to $27 or something like that, $28 bucks maybe. Uh, but this is coming in about $100 at $99 most places I've seen. I think the full retail is like $125, but you can find it for $99 out there. And I think that uh, at that price, if you're giving somebody a gift, I don't know, maybe that's a Christmas gift if you're kind of highfalutin maybe, or uh, certainly a, like a, a graduation gift or something. I think this is perfect for that. Um, so here's uh, some spec type stuff. So um, body and materials, resin, nib material, steel, but gold plated, so it looks fancier. Weight, 22.3 grams. Lengths there. Uh, I can also add the uh, grip section. Uh, width, well, let's see. Do you have space for that? Let's put it over here. That's about nine millimeters. So. There you go. Now, as you can see, this writes with no hesitation at all. Um, these are actually the same, uh, the same ink, just this one's been sitting around for a while. I haven't used this particular extra fine a little bit. Um, so you get a little bit of extra darkness. Let me zoom in just a skosh here and show you the, uh, the sizes, the sort of how they write here. The extra fine, which is this one, uh, you know, even after it's been sitting there for quite a while and hasn't been used, you can see the ink is darkened up a little bit. But it has not stopped flowing. There's no problem there. Actually, the ink I'm using in here also is Aurora Blue. I haven't used Aurora Blue until I put it in these pens, but it turns out that it's a little bit, you know, it's definitely a lot drier than Aurora's Black, which is one of those inks that's uh, the surefire ink. You can always tell if your pen is working fine if you put Aurora Black in there because it flows amazingly in everything. Aurora Blue is a little bit more controlled for sure. It's also a little bit more purple than a lot of blues, but it's a really good blue. So if you haven't used Aurora Blue yet, check it out. Uh, so that's the extra fine. And fine, of course, is this, uh, this Bordeaux. You can get these in all different colors. Just these are the ones they sent me. Um, and uh, the fine and the extra fine, I said, as I said, those are my favorites. The medium is a good, like, um, is my next choice. The broad, not bad. It's a very round broad. And this italic, it is a really, uh, really crisp italic. You can see the difference between these down strokes at 1.2, 1.3 millimeters, and these side strokes. So let's see if it's gonna go. No, it's not. I actually put Aurora Black in here because it was being a little bit resident, which you can see it's got a little bit of flex to it. Just a little bit if you put some pressure on it. Let's see if I can prime the pump here just to skosh. Uh, I said I haven't used this in a little while. It's been about a week or so. Oh, it's been actually maybe like almost two weeks since I've used this one. So it's not super surprising that it would dry up a little bit. I've been cycling through the other ones. All right, let's see. Good. There we go. So, also this is sugarcane paper. And uh, see, it just kind of just kind of petered out on me because I stopped pressing. I'm not used to having to press. Actually, here's the ticket. This is what you have to do. If you write very vertically, 
starts and writes every single time vertically. So I'm not really sure what the deal is, but if you go this way, it kind of stops. You usually see a little bit of railroading, but vertically, man, it writes just fine. So anyway, I'm not sure what's going on exactly with the italic nib. Uh, it's a very cool nib, and when it works, it works very nicely. I think it looks great, uh, but it's, uh, I don't know, I've had a little bit of problem with them. So that's the only negative thing I can really say about this pen is that the italic has not been super consistent for me. Uh, but some other stuff, I do love the way it feels in the hand, as I said earlier. The weight and the length are perfect, especially when capped. I love it. I love the way the cap uh, clips, or not clips, but clicks. I think that's awesome. I love that it clips, uh, clicks, goodness, onto the, uh, the, the post as well. Uh, and it feels really good when you do that. It's not going to come off. Also, I have no problem putting this on the placket of my shirt or whatever. I carry a lot of pins like that. I know it's a little bit dangerous sometimes. Most of the time they're screw caps, though, so it's not a big deal. But this is definitely a... I kind of takes a little bit of force. You're not going to act, it's not going to fall off accidentally. And I'm giving a little bit of torque right now, no problem at all. So, anyway, there's that. Uh, I don't really, I don't know, if you want to see a, a writing like sample, I guess I could do one, but let me know because I've already written a whole bunch of stuff here and this video is wicked long already. It's already going to be at like uh, 16, 17 minutes. So, I'm going to go ahead and call it there, I think. So check out these Aurora Ypsilons. These are fantastic little pens. They were new to me when I got them here. Uh, when Ryan said he was going to send these out, I was like, all right, I've never seen the, Ellips the Ypsilon before, except for, you know, in a couple of you know, stores and that sort of thing. Uh, the Andersons have them at the table when they go to the, the pen shows and such. Uh, but other than that, I really just haven't had any exposure to them because we don't have them in any of our stores around these parts. But definitely check out this Ypsilon at 99 bucks. This pen is great because it's all like handmade Italian pen action. So get yourself some of these Ypsilons at your favorite place that sells Ypsilons. Um, of course, my favorite place is uh, Anderson Pens. Uh, they don't pay me to say that. I probably should make them pay me to say that. <laughs> anyway, go check them out there or, uh, you know, other uh, sorts of places also will have them. But uh, thanks very much to Kenro and to Ryan for having faith in me and sending these out for me to check out and uh, letting me do this review. And I'm sad that I have to send them back to you, but I will. I will. Uh, so that's that. I am Mike. This is inkdependence.com. If you like what you see here on the blog and on this video channel, uh, please go over to uh, www.patreon.com slash inkdependence to find out how you can help support the blog. Here's a hint. It is through money donations. Uh, uh, if you don't know what Patreon is, you don't want to like go over there and find out. Here's the real brief version of it. And that is that it is a site which will allow you to make a, like a monthly donation. It's easy as pie. You just put in like your credit card or PayPal or whatever. And it will take out however much you want a month. Uh, a buck or something a month is awesome. I am super, super thankful to those who are my, uh, my patrons on that site. They've really been, you know, super generous. So thanks very much, folks. And uh, to all you future patrons out there, thanks very much for, for uh, considering it. All right, so I am uh, Mike. This is Ink Dependence. I am uh, MI5KE on the Instagrams. I am Mike Madison, all one word on the, on the, um, the Periscope these days. And I am at Madison on Twitter, M-A-T-T-E-S-O-N. So that's me, and uh, peace out, y'all.